Hi, everyone, and welcome to day 22 of my 31 Horror Movies in 31 Days of May series. Today I'll be reviewing a slasher from the early 1980s, and that is Prom Night, starring Leslie Nielsen and Jamie Lee Curtis. So Prom Night, released in 1980, is a Canadian slasher film. It was directed by Paul Lynch. And besides Leslie Nielsen and Jamie Lee Curtis, who are the most well-known actors and actresses in the movie, it also stars Casey Stevens, Eddie Benton, and Michael Tuff. Um, so I'll just kind of go ahead and give you the setup and the premise of the movie, and then I'll get into my spoiler-free thoughts and review of it. Um, so basically, the plot of this movie follows a group of high school seniors who are targeted at their prom by a mass killer seeking vengeance for an accidental death of a young girl that took place six years before. Um, so the movie actually opens in 1974 um, with the death, of, the accidental death of this girl. And so basically, there's this abandoned like warehouse or convent, I guess it is, that these four kids are playing. Um, I don't know what kind of game they're playing, but it involves the word kill a lot. Um, it's it's like a hide and seek rated R or something. Like the seeker basically keeps repeating that I'm kill, 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 You're, the killer's coming for you. I don't know if there's a game in the 70s. I That was before my time. That was uh, the killer game or whatever they called it. But I thought that was creepy to begin with. Um, but it's like a, like I said, a hide and seek of the killer's going to get you as opposed to just I found you. But anyway, so they're doing that. And then these three young kids, um, including Robin Hammond, who's a 10-year-old young girl, approach to warehouse one of them has to go home and get her book her older sister and her brother doesn't want to wait so he he walks off and so but she wants to join what they're playing so she goes into the warehouse and they discover and basically they tease her and bully her repeating kill 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 and then next and it leads to her accidental death by falling out of a second story window um and rather than seek help, the children decide, the, the three girls and the boy, the four children that were playing originally, decide that they'll get blamed for it. So they make a pact not to tell anyone and to keep it a secret, basically. Well, as they're riding away on their bikes, an unseen shadowy figure falls over Robin's body. And then it cuts away to six years later in 1980 when the film was made. And that's when most of it takes place in. Um so basically, Robin's family, who's played by her dad, Leslie Nielsen, her sister, who's the one that went home and forgot a book when they were kids, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, and then her brother, um, Nick, Jamie Lee Curtis plays Kim, or I'm sorry, um, her brother is Alex. Alex and Kim are, are fraternal twins. Uh, Kim played by Jamie Lee Curtis, Alex played by Michael Tuff. Their dad's Leslie Nielsen. I'm not sure who their mom is, but the four of them are left. The mom and dad are really, um, it's the six-year anniversary of her death. Um, so they're really traumatized, especially the mom. Um, but basically what happens is these four these four kids at the time that are now grown up in 1980 and are preparing for their senior prom get, get like obscene phone calls from this creepy voice on the other line talking about repeating their name and saying that, you know, can you come out and play tonight and things like that? Just really creepy. And they all kind of blow it off and don't think much of it. It's kind of an obscene phone call. Um, so, yeah, and then the boy that was one of the, the four kids, the one boy, the other three were girls, um, Casey Stevens, who plays Nick, um, happens to be dating Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Kim. And formerly dated um, Eddie Benton's character, Wendy, who is the girl that made the pack in 1974. Um, I'm probably making this too confusing, but they receive these phone calls and then they spend the day getting ready for prom. And we kind of get to know the characters a little bit and typical teenage high school stuff. And um, it all leads up to prom night. And I, I don't want to give too much more away than that. You can probably guess where it's going to be in a being an 80s slasher movie, but that's sort of the setup and the premise of the movie. Now I'll kind of get into my spoiler-free review. So this movie is kind of a mixed bag for me. Um, I'll start with the pros of it. I, um, the, the, this is more, this movie is known to be sort of a red herring movie and um, a suspenseful movie as opposed to a blood and guts kill movie. 
Um, the suspense is good. That leads up to the kills, which is good because you don't actually see the kills. If you're looking for blood and gore and like slashing, um, this is not the slasher for you. Um, if you want more suspense leading up to the actual kill, then you'll enjoy this movie. Um, they spend the first hour of the movie, which is both a pro and a con in my book of of trying to set up the characters and give some character development of the main characters, namely the four that were the kids at the, at the beginning of the film um, that made the pact, um, as well as the, the brother and the sister of the girl that was killed. Um, it works in some areas and not in others. Um, I think the opening is pretty effective, pretty creepy with the kill, kill, kill and the abandoned convent and the girl falling to her death. Just all of that, I think, is pretty well done to sort of get the audience's attention. The red herrings, that they, they really work hard on the red herrings in this movie. They even have sort of a a side plot with like a lieutenant or a police officer or detective that's, you know, it's almost it's almost feels like a different movie where this escape psychiatric patient they discover another body at the same abandoned convent in 1980 and of this girl that drove this beetle and um this guy that escaped of course another cliche um so they they set up a lot of red herring so you're kind of guessing throughout the movie is who's doing the killing um which, like I said, it's effective to a, to a degree. Um, that pretty much is the whole second act. It's The third act's really action-packed, and that's where all of our kills take place. Um, and, it, of course, it reveals the killer at the very end of the movie, which is, like I said, the third act's definitely the best part of this movie, both fortunately and unfortunately. Um, the set designs are pretty good with all the disco stuff and the dance floor and everything. Um, and the one kill that I liked and the, the most glorious was the head decapitation that takes place right before the king and queen are going to be um, introduced on stage. That part was pretty cool, and that's what clears out the, clears out the gym where the prom's taking place because everybody sees this decapitated head of this guy who's not, who's not um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character's uh, date. It's, it's not Kim's date. Um, this is a different guy, kind of a bully guy, which is another cliche that I'll get into when I get into my cons, which there are many. Um, but that I did enjoy the head decapitation. That was by far the best kill. So now we'll get into the cons. I hope you have about 25 minutes or so. No, it isn't that bad. But um, there are cons to this movie. The kills aren't very memorable, probably because you don't see them on screen. It's a lot of it's done off screen. And and that was done on purpose, which is fine, I guess. Um, the biggest problem with this movie is the first hour, there's no kills. Nothing happens. It's just all character development. And well, I, well, I don't mind horror movies that try to develop characters because I don't like all the time just seeing stock characters that we don't care about getting killed. I don't particularly think they set it up very well because I still didn't care about some of these characters that got killed. Um, the exception would probably be Wendy played by Eddie Benton. Her character, I thought, had the most development, certainly of the four, um, the four kids that made the pack at the beginning that were left and were being stalked on um, prom night. Um, but the other ones didn't really, like the other two girls I didn't really care about. And they really didn't, I still didn't really know their characters that well. Um, so that's why I don't think that first hour was well spent. Um, the acting performances are pretty uneven. I would say that, Leslie Nielsen's fine, even though he's only in half the movie. Jamie Lee Curtis is pretty good, although it's not her best even horror movie performance. That's Halloween, in my opinion. Um, and I think Eddie Benton as Wendy does a pretty good job. Other than that, the rest of them are just kind of meh. Take it or leave it. Um, I don't think the reveal was overly surprising. I'll admit it wasn't my first guess as to who the killer was. But it wasn't like I was, oh, my God, I didn't see that coming. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, okay. So um, where did Leslie Nielsen go the last 30 minutes of the movie? Now, I realize that they probably did that to a certain extent as another red herring. Like, he disappeared. Oh, maybe he's the killer, which they tried to play that angle along with his wife. But why doesn't he even come back at the end? I, I don't know. I just thought that was weird. I don't know if... They just couldn't pay to have him come back and, and shoot anymore or what the deal was.
was. But that always just kind of stuck with me watching the movie. Um, overall, it's kind of a PG slasher movie, if that makes sense. I mean, the movie's rated R in 1980. Um, but this is definitely a soft, a softer 1980s slasher movie compared to like Halloween or Friday the 13th or even, even other cult, um, slash films like The Burning, for example. Um, I thought there was more disco and dancing than there were kills in this movie. So, like I said, overall, I'm not going to beat this movie up too bad. It's, it's a fun watch, I guess. Um, it's definitely not the best slasher movie or even a top 10 from the 1980s, but it's it's watchable. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen are good enough. And and again, Eddie Benton. Um, I actually did care when Wendy got killed, even though she, you know, her character is supposed to be kind of a, a bitch and stuff and we're not supposed to like her. But, you know, she doesn't, she kept saying to this bully guy that I don't want them hurt. I think that... <sighs> She's kind of a cliched character, but I did, I think there was more development with her. So I did kill and, or I did care when she got killed ultimately, which spoiler, spoiler alert, I guess. Sorry if I spoiled it for you. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much my review from Prom Night 1980. It's, I would recommend checking it out. You don't necessarily need to buy it on Blu-ray or special edition like I have it. Although I will say this is the Snaps Films did release a good special edition. I think it might be the only way you can get it now anyway. Um, but I wouldn't rush right out to buy it. You can, it's streaming on Shutter and probably a few other streaming services. So, uh, that's my review of Prom Night, a pretty uneven slasher film. Um, please comment below and like this video if you've seen it before and what you, what your thoughts are. Um, please subscribe to my channel to see future horror reviews, including those continuing in my 31 Horror Movies of May series, as well as others coming up. So, um, my final ranking, I would give this movie, I'll be generous and give it a seven. I'm leaning six and a half out of 10. I could go seven out of 10 on the right day, but it's kind of in the middle for me. So that's my review of 1980s prom night. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.